Well, we're in Limerick for the start of the Loch Derg Way. Um, the Loch Derg Way goes from Limerick City to Drummondier, and it's about 62, 63 kilometers long. Um, we're going to do it over three days, more than likely. Um, so three relatively easy days. Um, it's raining today, so we're going to bum around the city for a bit and have like six coffees before we actually start walking. It's going to be great. I look forward to it. Behind me is what's known as the Treaty Stone. So if you've seen our video of the... Was it the Suck Valley Way? The Hymeny Way? The Hymeny Way? I think it was the Hymeny Way. We walked through a town called Accra, uh, in which the one of the largest battles ever fought on Irish soil was held in Accra. Um, and that entire conflict was essentially William Whites versus Jacobites about who was to sit on the English throne or at that time the throne of the British Isles. And the treaty that ended that war in 1691 was signed on this stone. Right. So it was nearly a hundred years of conflict and ended with this stone. Um, yeah, it has a lot of historical um, relevance, I suppose. Uh, Limerick as a city was under siege multiple times in this war. Um, hence all of the castles and walls and things. Um, and was in general quite a big military stronghold. So I suppose it's fitting that the treaty was signed here. So, um, in Ireland there are virtually no things that are going to damage your life uh, that you're going to find except for bulls and giant hogweed. And this is giant hogweed. So, if you've seen, um, if you've basically driven at all in Ireland in the summer, you'll have seen kind of in the ditches there's white flowers, it's usually called cow parsley or hogweed. Um, that stuff, that's fine. This stuff is a bigger version and it is gonna wreck your month. So if you, the sap of giant hogweed, um, if it gets onto your skin, it's gonna burn you, kind of like an acid burn. Um, it's photoreactive, so if you do touch the sap of it, put your hand in your pocket and don't let it see light for at least a couple of days. Um, but it's gonna, it'll, it's like, almost like a chemical burn and it'll really make you suffer. Uh, it's pretty much the only thing you have to watch out for when you're walking around. Um, so this is some of it, so don't touch it when you see it. Today we started in Limerick City uh, because it's a pretty horrible weather day. Our goal is just to get a few kilometres ticked off um, and kind of get into it. So we started in Limerick City and found, found an Elvis near where the old tourist office used to be and kind of continued out and walked along the canal bank and some kind of lovely redeveloped um, walking along there between the city centre and UL. We met a lot of runners, a lot of dog walkers. It seemed like a really nice uh, kind of local amenity. So after a while, we crossed the river and kind of go down some older pathways and kind of snake our way and hit some admittedly less inspiring road section. And that continues on for a little while. And then we reach here, which is uh, a big, what is this actually? It's a... Uh embankment. It's a gigantic floodplain for the river. And this is going to be a pretty pretty cool walk from here into Cronulara. Um, 
I'm really impressed with just how much you can see from up here. It's not that high, but it gives a really, really good um, field of view. So even with all this rain, it's kind of partially enjoyable at least. mountains and they're the mountains that we came over yesterday when we were finishing the Schlieffelen way so it's they're kind of cool to see just how close the two trails are um, and that the stuff that was leaving us kind of panting and out of breath was actually a proper looking mountain and not just some sort of oversized hill um, So this lock is a very specific type of lock. It's actually much more like a dam than a lock. Uh, the reason it's still a lock is that water does get through underneath. But basically the reason for this is that this part of the, the canal floods uh, in the winter and you're able to completely control the height of the river or of the canal um, if you wanted to do work further down or, or whatever. Um, because you can pick up or remove different planks out of it. Um, which is cool. It's one of basically two lock designs that you see all over Ireland. Um, it's this lock and it's like with two doors. The other thing that's really cool about this place is the um, in-cuts from the tow ropes. It's how you know this place has been used for hundreds of years. That all of the ropes used to kind of cut along when barges went up and down the river. It's really impressive and I can't believe that we didn't pay attention to this on the two canals that we just walked. I'm kicking myself now for not looking at it. But yeah, this place has a name. Did you read what the name of the bridge was? No. Arena Bridge. It's called Arena Bridge. And it's also this tall because the river would flood up quite far. That's all I got. So we've made it to O'Brien's Bridge and this is our end point for today, for this very, very, very wet day. Um, it's probably, I don't know, 15 kilometres to here? Not quite sure. Um, but I will go that it was very varied. We had the kind of canal section coming out of Limerick, a bit of road, a bit of uh, embankment, really nice stretch um, bes beside a smaller canal, loads of trees. It's been a really nice mix today, even if the weather was kind of horrible. Um, yeah, there's supposed to be sunshine tomorrow. I am very excited for some dry socks. So this is day two. Uh, we've just come out of O'Brien's Bridge, along the embankment, and I think we're gonna make it to Killaloo for our lunch hopefully and then we'll just keep going and see how far we get it is way nicer than it was yesterday there are there's clouds and there's a breeze but there's no rain and there's some sunshine so much 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 improved today
<laughs> so normally we wait until we get to the very top to take um, some video about the amazing beautiful scenery we have but often at the top it's really windy and you can't hear the audio so we end up not using those clips so we're going to be preemptive and do it now because it's already beautiful and there's no wind it's a lot of sunshine oh my god you like chalk and cheese yesterday and today um, yeah so amazing makes the makes the road bearable the view I really have to say like this is probably a top three view that we've had on these on the 27 walks that we've been on this is definitely one of the best views incredible just amazing amazing views it helps that the weather is great today so over here is keeper hill the kind of the tall the tallest thing on the horizon here is keeper hill we camped on that three nights ago I think uh, on the Schlieff Fulham way and then way off in the distance are the Galtys no trail there yet but hopefully in some day the um, Tipperary Heritage Way goes across the bottom of it oh yeah great yeah Galtys Tipperary Heritage Way so that's the trail over kind of a little bit over this way is the East Clear Way which we haven't been on yet but we'll see um, obviously looking directly back where we just came is uh, this exact trail, the Loch Derg Way, you can see um, there's a on the tiny lake, like lake section down there. Um, there's this very long bridge weir thing that we walked uh, past about four or five hours ago. So that's really cool to be able to see. In the distance is Limerick. Um, incredible, incredible views. <sighs> we are going to be really sunburned tomorrow. So this behind me and kind of in this general region is what's known as the Graves of the Leinstermen, um, which might originally have been a stone circle or a Neolithic tomb of some kind. Um, and now what's left is one standing stone and a lot of lying down stones. Um, yeah. We always miss these things. It's really nice to finally get a chance to actually see one. Um, it's always very easy to just walk right past and not even notice, um, so it is kind of cool to see. I don't know if you can see this cross back here, it's a little bit reflecting in the sun. That cross back there is the replacement for this cross right here that doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, it's uh, that back there is the millennial cross. The millennial, yeah, it eats a lot of avocados. The Millennium Cross, um, which I presume was built in 2000. Um, but yeah, it's collapsed. It's pretty interesting to to see, um, and what a view as well. I think this trail is like the rating for this trail is steadily going up as long as we stay at a high altitude. It really does look incredible. Um, yeah, and not actually, not all that um, strenuous, not nearly as strenuous as I expected it to be. Um, it's been quite nice and gentle the whole way. Um, this is the only tall part of the entire trail. Everything else is pretty much at ground level. So, making the most out of it, I think. Eating lots of fruitcake.
Okay, so it's our last day on the Loch Derg Way. Um, I want to say a really big thank you to Derg Lodge for putting us up for the night. Oh my god, it's so hot. It's so hot. Eh? Right now we are over, like back up at a small height, uh, looking over Loch Derg. It's Mount Shannon, the town that's like directly behind my head, so you probably can't see it. And today we're heading for Drummond and that will be the end. Um, super, super sunny again. Hopefully it'll be a beautiful walk. I can't imagine it won't be, really. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we are, I don't know, less than 20 kilometers from Dremonier. We set out late this morning, so it's now around 3 o'clock. So we've been walking through all of the like blistering heat. So we're currently just kind of shadow hopping from one shady tree to the next. And, um, I forgot how draining the heat is. So, sorry, um, we're probably a teeny bit dehydrated. Well, I don't know. We are we are drinking all our water, but maybe we're just a bit like heat crazy. It's hot. Mhm. Mm Sunny. So I'm going to guess we're hopefully 15 kilometers from the end and while we have some beautiful shade um, I want to quickly mention um, all the people who are helping us on this trail. What's been really amazing uh, is the number of people who have helped us and have contacted us to help us on each of different trails or just general encouragement. It's been really really nice and we've had loads of people um, put us up or give us a lift um, along this trail. So I'm to say a really um, quick but heartfelt thank you um, to Shawnee and Kira, uh, Shay and Karen, to Dave and Sarah of Derg Lodge, and soon to David, who, who we will be meeting at the end of this trail. Um, it's been amazing meeting people and just how generous everybody is and nice. Everybody who has a car. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's all really. We really appreciate it. Thank you. No, don't fill me. Now I feel like I have to drink it. Well, if you drink half of that, I'll drink the other half. Really? Yeah, if you don't fall over dead. It doesn't smell like anything. I just my, my, my little finger cut on it, maybe I'll magically heal my finger. Don't you think? Hmm. Seems likely. Oh, it's actually really cool. It's like really nice and cold. Oh, it doesn't taste bad. Okay, I'd write some. you try some? Mm-hmm. Really? Sure. You're gonna wait 10 seconds and then try some? Mm hmm. Make sure you don't fall over. I'll just leave it there for you, sir. Bit of moss just like floating around in it. Is there? Yeah. Okay. It does taste like it could be tap water, though. Yeah. In a good way, I mean, just saying. Yeah. I 
think this is the most overgrown any part of any trail has been that we've been forced to walk through like there's no real other option here because the it's on a bank so there's you know it's three or four or even five or six feet on either side oh my god and it's so warm my legs are so sore <sighs> oh, my face feels me too. So it's like an hour and 40 minutes later and if you're to look at the map kind of like as the crow flies we've made it two kilometers. The trail itself is probably three, three and a half um, but it was elbow high nettles. Elbow high nettles on Carl, not, not just me. <laughs> um, what are you saying? All the way, all the way. So so painful. Back on the road though, so like, maybe we'll make up for some lost time. Yep. Okay. Okay, well we're at the end of the Loch Derg Way, that's Trail 27 done. We're both completely wrecked, um, but an enormous, enormous thank you to David for buying us pints and putting us up for the night, um, and also working on the trail, so a huge thank you to you. Um, so the trail, really good. Uh, I would give it like an 8 out of 10. Um, the only downside is that there's a little bit that's overgrown that really you shouldn't do right now. So um, just do the whole thing. Be aware that there is. Bring, bring a stick or a machete or something. Um, or maybe they will do that bit. I don't know. I'll talk more about this tomorrow, I think, because to be honest, I desperately need a drink. So, good trip.